wonderful to have a good friend from Rossville, Georgia, brother Samuel Freed, who works with the Hope of Israel Ministries, and so many of us regard the country of Israel, the Abrahamic Covenant, and we appreciate that. We appreciate that our uh, that the embassy has been moved from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. We believe the Word of God is very clear on how that we are to deal with the God's people, the people of Israel. Brother Sam, good to have you here today. And I want you, uh, brother, to tell our good audience, wherever they might be watching, about what can we expect? What are the goals of the hope of Israel? Thank you, Brother Phibbs, and I appreciate the opportunity. I really do. Uh, tell you a little bit about uh, my background and, and my family's history, and I kind of get into what God has allowed us to be involved in uh, through these years. Uh, my dad was born and raised in a very religious uh, Jewish home in New York City, and when he was 17 years old, his uncle, Rabbi Shepherd Bam, uh, died suddenly, and it mm. just it devastated the family. Wow. And um, Dad really started seeking for answers at that point. And uh, the cry on his heart was, "God, if you're real, I want to know how I can have peace." Mm. And he said, "God." Judaism offers so much, but it doesn't offer answers about eternity. Mm -hmm. And he said, I need answers. And, and the more he began to search, the more he began to find that there was more questions than there was anything. And so his um, aunt told him, she said, you can go back to your uncle's library. She said, you can take any book you want to have out of Uncle Shep's uh, collection there. And so dad went back and started searching and um, he spent several days going through that library and looking at books about the religions of the world. And, and the, more he, the more he researched, he pretty much found out that they were all the same, that it was all based on if you do this and do yeah. this and do this, then Dude. you can try to find favor with God, trying to uh, work your way. And he said, you know, there's no difference between that and trying to keep the law of Moses and follow the rabbinical yeah. writings. And uh, he, he about lost hope. And he got down to the most sacred part of his uncle's library. And um, on the top shelf, there was a very large uh, bookcase. And his uncle kept the most priceless collection of his books on that very top shelf, but there was a little black book mm. that was stuck in the middle of all the tall books. It was out of place. Right. It didn't belong there. And um, it caught Dad's attention. And so he thought to himself, I need to find out what Uncle Shep thought was so important to put up there in that most sacred part and pulled it off the shelf. And um, it was a little black book about the size of this one. And it didn't have all of the uh, all of the gold on it, but it just had gold letters across the top, the one he pulled down and it said, Holy Bible. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, had, he had never held the scriptures in his hand. He, of course, he'd been to uh, synagogue all of his life and heard the rabbi read from the scroll, but had never actually held God's word in his hand. And come to find out, Someone 40 years before my dad had walked into that library had given my great uncle a King James Bible. Isn't that amazing? And he'd been sitting on that shelf all those years. And, and my dad started reading it. And um, come to find out that there are some, there's some things that they don't speak about in the synagogue uh, that is in the Holy Scriptures in yes. places like Psalms 2 where God said, uh, kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish from the way. I mean, worship the son. And dad said, I've never heard any uh, conversation in any Torah study about a son I'm supposed to worship. And um, Proverbs 30, God asked, uh, what is his son's name if thou canst tell? And then Isaiah 7, 14 about uh, um, unto us a child is born mm -hmm. and, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Sure. That was Isaiah 9. And then 7 talks about how that a virgin shall conceive yeah. and bear a son. Right. And, and so all of the reading through the Holy Scriptures for himself, he found that there was a whole lot of, a whole lot of talk about this son. And he said, I don't know who he is. Who is he to be? And the more he'd been to read through that Scripture, he found once he got to the end there that there was books he had never heard of, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And um, he thought, well, if Rabbi Shep thought enough to put it in that part of his library, he said, I guess I'll read these other books. And of course, come to find out reading the Gospel of Matthew that it, that it wasn't like what uh, the rabbis had told him growing up. Don't read the New Testament. It's a, it's a book that leads Jews astray. He realized, he said, no, this is a Jewish book. And this mm -hmm. is about a Jewish man. This is about a Jewish, uh, it's, it's, every bit of it is. And so 
all of the answers and the questions, who is this son? When is he going to be born? What is he going to do? It was all answered right there um, in reading the Gospel of Matthew. And at 17 years old, uh, my dad found Jesus Christ as his Savior, and, and it changed his life. And um, so the, the work of, of Hope of Israel publications, part of Hope of Israel Baptist Mission, is we've, through the years, almost 20 years now, God's allowed us to publish these beautiful Hebrew-English New Testaments. Yes, and, um, I have one. They're the only ones like it in the world. On the, on the back we have uh, the 12 tribes of Israel, the symbols for that in, in printed. And then on the front, this is some of the same imprint that goes on the outside cover of a Torah mm -hmm. scroll. And but all the way through on either side you have Hebrew and English. And uh, over these past almost, almost 20 years now, God's allowed us to print almost 200,000 of these special edition New Covenants, New Testaments. Well, what's interesting, you told me before we both went on the air, that you make these available for what cost? Yes, sir. absolutely free. That's and, what um, I thought you said. Yes, sir. Anyone uh, and anyone in our audience uh, today who, who may have a Jewish friend, a Jewish co-worker, uh, a family, acquaintance, anything like that, if you'll get in contact with us and, and we'll have the information up there um, on the screen where you can um, write us or get on our website, hopeofisrael.net, um, we want to give you one of these New Testaments. In December, um, normally around Christmas time, and sometimes it's during yeah. or before, but the Jewish people celebrate Hanukkah. It's eight days of giving and receiving gifts, and it's can actually start this year, uh, the last week of November. But this would be a wonderful gift to be able to wrap up and present to that Jewish friend and just let them know that you love them, you appreciate them, but you also, you care about their soul and, and you want them to know Jesus Christ as the, as the ultimate gift. And there's no, no greater blessing that we could be uh, than to give them the gift of the Messiah. What a wonderful, I'll tell you what a wonderful proclamation. Uh, Brother Samuel Freed, thank you for joining us on Faith, Family, and Freedom. Any way we can ever help you, we want to do that, okay? Thank you, Brother Phipps. I appreciate that. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us here today. I'm Andrew Phipps, and I am always excited about your being a part of our broadcast. If you would be so kind, perhaps even now, to remind a neighbor or friend and ask them to join in on today's program, I think that would be great. We're trying always to expand the programming. We would like to have a, a good song within the confines of that time limit. We like to have guests on from time to time, and if you, as a pastor or someone, would be interested in that, be sure that you contact us. Also, if you know of a television station that might be interested in, in having this program on their outreach, that would be wonderful as well. Today I want to talk about something that's also dear to my heart, and that's the freedom that we all enjoy. Freedom should never be taken lightly. Freedom comes at a price. I believe when you go back and you study through our civilizations, you'll find out even when you go to Washington, D.C., that on the Korean monument, it says the price of freedom is not free. I think there is, has always been a struggle to keep men in check that they would not destroy one another. When nations rise against nations, that's going to be a part of the end times as I see it. And there will come a time when the nations will try their best to destroy the country of Israel. They will try to wipe them off the map. And seemingly, we see a prologue to that today. We hear of people that are very antithetical to the interests of Israel. Many people talk openly. Some members of Congress vehemently talk about our friends in the Middle East, the greatest democracy in the Middle East, the nation of Israel. Although a small nation, but not a very large population, they're still a great friend to this country. And they have come to our aid on many occasions in their friendship. And I know that we have done likewise, but I think every president should be very careful in trying to do something that would put the interest of Israel in a very bad negative way. 
I do not believe that any political party should have any favor that does not embrace the sovereignty and the nation of Israel. I believe if you go back to Holy Scripture, you can find conclusively that this nation is the people of God. The Lord himself said, I did not choose you because you were the greatest in number. He said, you were the fewest in number, but I chose you because I loved you. Israel is the apple of his eye. We have had some great moments. I'm so glad that when President Harry Truman recognized the independent status of Israel in May of 1948, somewhere around May the 15th, I believe. And President Truman recognized the independence. Here, the people of Israel had been scattered abroad. They had been dispersed. They had been under subjugation. We all know what we read and know in the accounts of the, uh, the situation as Hitler, Adolf Hitler, this madman, that wanted to, annihil to annihilate the nation of Israel. Isn't it terrible that we would have a congressman that says that this may just be a myth, that maybe the Holocaust did not take place? I refute, refute that with every fiber of my being. We have all kinds of valid resources, interviews, taped interviews. We have the evidence from the gulags and from the ghettos and from the concentration camps that go beyond human words to try to describe the degradation, the death and the destruction of the people of God, even down to little children and all like that. It's so bad that even when I visited the Holocaust there in Washington, D.C., and I think I've been there twice, even the appearance of the building is foreboding. It has a very negative, dark atmosphere. Nothing is very cheerful, and perhaps rightfully so. When you go in there and you even get a, a ticket that has a maybe a name, at least, or a picture of one of the people that faced certain death there, that came in on the cattle cars, put in their with no room, no space, no air, no food, treated worse than any animal. And yet we would have those today that says, well, that uh, Israel is doomed to annihilation. I know that's not so. As somebody said, I've read the end of the book. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace, and he will once again visit his people. He will, the nation of Israel will come back and be restored. And I, I know that there are so many that do this so wonderfully that have a vision for Israel, just like our guest, our brother Samuel Freed, when he talked about uh, having the hope of Israel ministries. And I believe that we'll see more of this in the coming days because the times are being fulfilled right before our eyes. There are all kinds of signs given. The phrases, the descriptions of the end times of what's going to take place, like in the book of Timothy, when we see that, the book of the Thessalonians, second chapter, a uh, second book of the Thessalonians, chapter two, one day that the Holy Spirit will be removed from this earth and we're going to see a time that in the Bible and the Old Testament was described as the days of Jacob's trouble. And it's going to be a great time of tribulation, such as was never before, nor ever will be again. And we'll continue with our thinking when we return in just a moment. Dottie Rambo wrote so many wonderful songs, classics. She had such a, a gifted way about expressing herself. The Mark Trammell 
Quartet took one of Dottie Rambo's great classics, and they sing it so well. The beautiful harmony, the arrangement of, as they are featured today with a great selection that says, too much, too much to gain, to lose. Too many miles behind me. Too many trials are through. Too many tears. Why they help me remember there's just too much to gain, to lose. I've crossed the hot burning desert, struggling the right road to choose. Somewhere up ahead, there is cool, clear water, and defeat is one word I just won't use. Many sunset. If you'd like to have any of our products, we do have a Faith, Fame, and Freedom handbook. We have some DVDs. We did one with Pastor Jim Scudder in Washington, D.C. a little over a year ago. It's called, Can You Find God in D.C.? I think you will enjoy the beautiful programming that was done in the Jefferson and Lincoln Memorials and other places. If you want any of our products, just call us or get in touch with us, as would be indicated there on the screen. As we continue with our discussion, I think again about Israel and the attempts at peace accords, and it seems like that when those efforts are made, for whatever reasons, they don't seem to hold up very long. There's uh, so much against this country. People, the various groups that want to try to break Israel, try to destroy them, try to take away from them, and this has been done repeatedly throughout the history of mankind. But there is going to be a day of fulfillment, a day of restoration, and I am thankful for that. I know that God's completely in control. He governs in the affairs of men. I believe it was Benjamin Franklin who said that if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, how can empires rise without his aid? We must not, as a nation, forget and try to put God in a secondary place. 
We cannot put him in the back seat as it were. The Lord will either have the preeminence or he is not going to take second place in any situation. The time will come when every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess Jesus to the glory of God the Father. And so whatever your station in life, whether you be rich or poor, or whether you be Jew or Gentile, whatever your nationality or your race might be, those will not be the considerations then. It's best for us to think about eternity today in light of this moment. We have this present time. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. We know this, that each day is not at our control. We see people, we've heard of people that were doing well one day and the next day funeral preparations were being made. And I say that not to be negative, but I say it because it's being realism, realistic. We do not control our lives. Uh, the very picture or the very epitome of good health, I've seen it where folks you just could not believe when you heard because you just thought, well, those people are just super abundantly well. They do well, they exercise, they eat well, they do the proper things. But my friend, we need to make preparation. We need to be like Abraham of old. You know, the Bible said he left the land of the Chaldees. He went looking, Hebrews said, for a city whose builder and maker is God. Abraham did not find that city in Bethel. He did not find it in Beersheba, but he was still looking. And I'm glad today that is, that is our hope. And it would do us well as people to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, to pray that God would fulfill, and he will. But let's pray for one another, and let's especially pray for this nation that we love. And somebody may say, well, it seems kind of like a contradiction of terms why that Christians would be in love or love the people of Israel. We've been commanded to. God didn't give us an option. He didn't give us a plan B there. He made it very clear that those that would bless this country would be blessed and those that would curse this country would be cursed. I think today in our political decisions that it would do us well if we would heed the Bible, if we would take time to do so. I think that our political leaders enter in quandary. They're trying to come up with solutions and they really don't know themselves why they're doing some of the things that they're doing. They're just trying to make judgments. Oftentimes they're just trying to kick the ball down the road, so to speak. And many times they're afraid to make a decision. They don't want to be held accountable for the decision. They'd rather have it in a secret vote or a non-recorded vote. Or I, I, as a matter of fact, it bothers me oftentimes that we don't see very many of our political leaders that are standing up and being counted that take a strong stand for the moral issues of the day, that take a strong stand for decency, for morality, for what's right. It seems like that I don't know, maybe the call of the Potomac, the Potomac fever, maybe the money chase of where you're all the time trying to get more money so you can be reelected, so you can raise more money so you can be reelected. That cycle is vicious. And I would to God that we had some people that would stand resolutely, that would stand with as a backbone and say, you know, if I never get elected again, so be it. But I'm going to vote my convictions. I'm going to vote on what I know to be right, what I believe to be right, something that I don't have to be apologetic for, something that I don't have to be ashamed of, that I can keep my head high and know that I've tried to do what's right. Those are the needs of a patriot. I believe Mark Twain said it again, and I've used this. He said, in the beginning of a change, the patriot is a brave and scarce man, often hated and scorned. But when his cause succeeds, however, the timid join him, 
for then it costs nothing to be a patriot. When you look back into our history and you see those that took bold stands, that made bold decisions, leaders that did not want to pass the buck, that said basically, we've made the decision and I'm willing to be accountable for the actions that we took. Those people oftentimes are rare. Sometimes we don't find them, maybe seemingly in maybe a, a generation or we find so few of them. It's so easy to go along or to get along so it is even in our churches. Oftentimes we don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to upset any of the members or we don't want to speak against sin in a bold way. We try to dodge it as much as possible and we just try to placate and smooth it over. But that's not the right position. It's not the right thing to do. We ought to do what's right regardless of the circumstance. I hope that you continue to enjoy the programs. And let me say it like this. If you're a pastor, a church, and you feel like that the message that we're sending forth, that we're trying to articulate, that if that message is of significance, if you think it's worthwhile, we always can use your help. We try to get more television time, and we have contact information that you can see from time to time. Again, my church is Liberty Baptist Church, 9601 South Cowan Road in Muncie. And this is Andrew Phipps. Phipps Faith, Family and Freedom presented by Clemens Home Solutions and Heritage Funeral Care.